this day, we greet you in the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. So today we have a, a double, a double interview. We have father and son. Our very first interview was from Sister Juliet, and, um, which is in Canada. And today we have her husband. Her husband is a Dominican and her husband's father. And this is her father, her husband's father, which is her father-in-law, Deacon Matthew. And um, with Deacon Matthew is her husband, Brother Daniel Allen. And we have our co-host with us, Sister Dini from Texas. And we have your faithful servant, Brother Bradley, which is from the Caribbean, all over the Caribbean. And we say, Benvini Tutmun, welcome everybody. And uh, we are about to start and we are going to allow our guests, Brother Daniel Allen and his father, to briefly introduce themselves and say who they are. Go ahead, my brother, the floor is yours. We are not going to delay because we have people that are looking at us. They are viewing. I think they introduce yourself. Well, hallelujah. I'm Matthew Allen, Deacon Matthew Allen from Dominica. Uh, I greet everyone in the name of our dear beloved Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, His Father Almighty Yahweh. I hope this program will be a, a blessing to you all and that you all will be edified by whatever is taking place at this moment. So feel free and just enjoy what is taking place. Okay, I'm Daniel, um, born, raised Dominican, living in Canada. That's all. <laughs> Come on, man. That's all you're telling the viewers. <laughs> oh, but anyway, um, yes. Um, so we have a double today. We have double interview today. We have double interview today from father and son and um, is the holy spirit there yes indeed the holy spirit <laughs> okay so we are going to start and we are going to begin and we are going to hit the road and yes indeed um we are going to begin the program officially questions ah first question how long have you been how long have you been in the faith? Tell us about you, about your work with Messiah Yahshua. Can you briefly tell us about you and the work? What is it like to be a believer in Yahshua? We need to know what it is to be a believer in Yahshua. So can you briefly tell me? Tell the audience, tell our viewers, our followers on YouTube and on Facebook what it is like to be a believer, what it is like to be a fellow believer of Yahshua, Yahweh, Yahshua. Can we, I think we should go with the younger one first, Brother Daniel. Um, you go first, and then we'll have Deacon Matthew, your father. All right, I guess you have to go in, in that order. <laughs> um, okay, I've been in the thief. Uh, 40, 41 years, because I'm now 41. Um, okay, being the thief, um, yes, it has it, its, its ups and downs, it's all its challenges. Um, but for me, it's um, uh, learning um, by experience, because even if you, you, you were raised in the faith, um, it doesn't mean like you have everything um, under um, control, you know? You always um, have your own um, challenges uh, inside and outside. Um, yeah, you would fall and you'd rise. Um, but uh, raising any faith is quite an advantage, I would say. And um, for me, um, being in it 41 years, um, it has, as I said, it has its challenges. But still, um, Father Yahweh has his way of keeping his people strong and, um, you know, uh, bringing us through. Because I mostly, um, Yahweh has blessed me, yes. And at the same time, um, we cannot forget him and Messiah um, himself um, keeping us uh, strong and, and well binded. It's just that we just have to make sure that um, uh, we just do not forget, you know, our Father and his Son. Doesn't matter what we go through, we just do not forget. 
So 40 years, you have been in the faith for 40 years or 41 years? I'm 41. 41 years. That's a lot of years. You were born in the faith? Yeah. Okay, great. You were born in the faith. Okay, that's nice. But we're holding that there for now. Let's hear from the father now. You're your father's oldest child? Uh, yes. Oh, okay, good. So let me hear whether he, he entered the same year he, gave, he, he had you. Go ahead, Deacon. Um, how, well, long have you, how, how long have you been in the faith? Well, I have Before. been in the faith, faith for, let me say, 43 years. Yeah. It, can, it can be before that, but I'm talking when I give Yahshua my life. Give pretty means I was immersed Amen. in his name. Because if I just follow in and they are not immersed, I don't say I'm in the faith yet. I just, there. Yeah. But when I, I accept him, it's about 43 years. Uh, I have been in the faith. It has been really challenge and whatever it is, but I had make up my mind, you know, come what may, whether weakness or whatever it is, I will always trust Almighty Yahweh in way. I had ups and downs, but yet still, I always keep my integrity by doing what I know that is right. Mistakes have happened because there is no one that can say, look, I didn't have a, I never make mistakes. People make mistakes. Even the prophets, even of all who were called, they make mistakes. But when you make mistakes, you don't stay and pun on a mistake. You rise and be a better person. So I thank the Father for his goodness because I was first was going to a church called Pentecostal, but when the, the name came up and things. So my, my conviction scripture was at 12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And understood that even today that the Hebrew alphabet has no letter J. So the conclusion come here, it could never have been Jesus. Because if the Hebrew alphabet had no letter G, then how do they come about the name Jesus? So I begin to study, and then I got myself accepting the name of Almighty Yahweh and His Son Yahshua the Messiah. And from today, I can tell and testify that He has been good to me. And come what me, I'm going to hold on to the faith. And I'm there to see all my grandchildren. I'm trying my best to even, if I can have all in the fifth, and even my children, I bless Almighty Yahweh for them. At least I have all my children in the fifth, and I thank Almighty Yahweh for that. I've been in, um, encouraging them to be in music and everything, because even the assembly, which I'm going to call Yahweh, the assembly, um, the musician is my children. So I thank Almighty Yahweh for it, my, 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 my biological children, and also my grandchildren, they also are in the faith. And my, uh, my grandson, which is on the drum, I have um, my son, which is on the keyboard, and, and Sami, I have him on the um, bass guitar. And I myself play guitar also. So Sami so, so Sammy, Sammy is your adopted son? Adopted son. Yeah. I, I take him from since four years. He was just four years old. So he's your so son. I claim, claim him as my son. Because yeah. I raise him up. Yes. yes. And, and they are in the assembly. Mm -hmm. And they are the musician for the, in the assembly. And I thank Almighty Yahweh for that. And I'm glad because I'm trying my best to really keep them there that they will stay in the faith and they will do what is right. But I love all my children. I love my, my grand. I love my, my even um, um, step children, do whatever it is. My, 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 my people, which I know that they at least can say that, I, well, I have been very good to them. And, all my my life I do is always try my best to see the best for my children and the best for all of them. 
All now, so I have three grandchildren with me, and I thank the Father for that. And I am raising them in the faith. And I hope that when they get to their age, that they can able to take their immersion, and that they may do and walk the way of Almighty Yahweh. So I thank Almighty Yahweh for that. And I will encourage those who have their children, try their best with them, be patient with them, because children can be sometimes very troublesome, but you have to be patient with them and teach them the way of Yahweh that they, when they grow old, that they will not depart from the faith. May Yahweh bless us. Yes, raise the, bring up the child in the way uh, that he don't depart when he grows old. And your entire household is in the faith. As for me and my house, you will serve Yahweh. You, you remind me of Joshua, the book Joshua, which is very impressive. It is very nice. And um, I really love that. Daniel just said he was born in the faith. There was once I said to somebody, I wish I was born in the faith. And then that person said to me, no, you should not say that. There are a lot of struggles and battle in that faith, being in the faith. But I believe Almighty Yahweh is wonderful and he is our father, he's our keeper, and he will never leave us nor forsake us. And we should never be afraid because he will always look out for us. Okay, so we have a few questions and um, question to brother Alan, Daniel Alan, uh, first question. Do you think faith is paramount or an influenza to the lifestyle we live? Do you think faith is paramount or an influenza to the lifestyle we live? Alan, mm. Daniel. Well, it depends on how um, faith in itself can be a paramount, how you, check, how you actually consider it, and it also can be an influencer, how you consider it. But as for me, based on my own experience, <laughs> whether you have faith or not, it's not that much because I believe in the most high. Um, I'm not okay. Mostly, or mostly everybody believe, or mostly everybody believe that there is a, a father above, but yet still, uh, the lifestyle doesn't match it. <laughs> so, um, faith is not, I would say, a paramount. It will, it can be a paramount if the actions um, follow it directly. But if um, the action doesn't follow it directly, then it's 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 no it's of no use. <laughs> would even be a paramount. I would consider me to be an influencer. So you would say it's both? Yeah, it depends. It depends on how it is perceived by an action. Then you know in what category it falls. Okay, so paramount means um, the most important thing. That's what exactly. paramount means, the most important thing. Vikun Mafi, what would you say? Would you say fifth is paramount? Would you say it's the most important thing? Well, faith is the most important thing, but it depends on how you differentiate faith. Because faith, according to what the scriptures say, faith is the substance of things, something hoped for, something that you have not seen, but you believe. Uh -huh. And you believe that whatever that, that is there, that you will achieve it, by faith. No, because what happened, some people, because of weakness, you know, if you are weak, then your faith will be also weak because you have to make sure that you know what you are about and you have to make sure that you believe. It's just like a, a man is there. He told you like that, um, hey, He's, he passed on a, ro a rope with a barrow. You say, oh, this guy is good. He's very, 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 very good. But then he comes to you, he tells you, go in the barrow, and he's going to come across the, the, the rope. Then you say, me? No. Then no. Uh -huh. That is when you are very weak in faith. If uh -huh. you're strong in faith and you believe it, then you would at least, you would at least, Go in the barrow and have no fear. So that is what people, usually people, speak concerning faith. But what is faith? If you have faith, you could just say to this monk and move. You know, that is faith, believing. But when you say you have faith and you have doubt within you, 
it's going to be a paranoid. It will be because why you doesn't have that confidence. It's the confidence you doesn't have. But most of them I hear people talk about faith. And when it's come to exhibit what faith is, it's a something that is different. So faith is something that if you have faith, at least somebody will see it. If I have faith, you will see it. Because when challenges come for me, you will see whether I can go through the challenges or not. And, and if you really have the faith according to the scripture said, no matter what comes your way, you will believe and hold what you, you have. Like the other day, a guy was telling me, boy, I don't know if I'll get the mark of the beast. I say, guy, let me tell you something. Where is your faith? Mm. Where is your faith? If you have faith and believe, you cannot have that mind that the mark of beast. And number one, I told him, the mark of the beast, whom he has sure seal, can never take the mark of the beast. So I tell him, yet again, you have to have that confidence and that faith and belief. And even in prayer of healing, if your faith is weak, that prayer may not hold or may not able to work as it's supposed to, to work. But when you have faith, belief, like even when the woman decides, no matter what, she says she couldn't just touch the hem of his garment, she know that she would be whole. And when that happened, because of faith belief, Yashua said, I feel virtue came out from me. Because okay. she believed. And that was a strong faith. She really believed. And if we have that faith that the scripture talk about, well, nothing can move us. Nothing can move you. So then we can safely say faith is paramount. It is. Yes. And yeah. somebody, so then, so then somebody else's faith. Witnessing somebody else's faith could be influenza. Yeah, that is it. Yes. Ah, can be. But, ah, but what about can be. me? But ah. what about me? Uh -huh. Okay. Okay, faith is paramount. Yes. Okay, in to a certain extent. Okay, yes. But still, I will still see, right? Um, I may be wrong, but I but I'm just look and looking at that in a practical set. Yes, you may have faith. Yes, you know for sure that can happen, right? But if you don't have the willingness to do it, you won't do it. Even the devil um, have faith. He knows who the Mosai is. But yet still, he doesn't want to serve the Mosai. Well, so um, I, think, I think faith is followed back up by willingness. Yes, you know. Yes, you believe that can happen. But unless you put yourself forward to make it happen, it's like, what's the point of believing? Or, or what's the point of the faith? Yeah, it's just like faith. Like action, faith like as the apostle said, yeah, faith without action is like nothing. So yeah, it's something faith, like that I'm referring to. Yeah, faith without works is dead. Yeah, indeed, faith exactly. without works is dead. You can have all the faith and you don't act upon it. It's like nothing. Exactly. But um, but Deacon Matthew said mentioned something about fear. Double F. I call them the double F. Fear, faith, and fear. Fear is one of the most um dangerous things that a believer should ever have in his life. Fear brings doubt. And once you have doubt, you do not have faith. So fear is one thing because Yahweh did not put the spirit of fear in us, but the spirit of boldness. And we should never be afraid no matter what may come, but have faith in the Almighty that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And once we are able to have that, we will make it through. And Abaya will always be with us. Um, our our co-host just said that she had to leave. I don't know whether she is still uh, there. You are still there, Sister Dini? Yes, I am. I'm still here. You driving? You driving? Not yet. I'm about to. <laughs> oh, at least be safe on the road. And when you're driving, at least let us see a piece of the road. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That would be very, very dangerous. <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> well, be safe on yeah. the road. Anyway, um, you have anything okay. to say? You have anything to say? Anything? Who, me or elder? You, you. Oh, it was powerful what the elder was saying. And it's knowledgeful and I'm learning. And a lot of people will be able to gain from the wisdom and the word that he's talking about and the fear of people of the map of the beast. Um, it's one of the most paramount things in this end time. So what he's saying, uh, he was speaking prophetically to the people using that testimony and um, so with that, them knowing that Yahushua is, when you have him, 
you don't have to fear about the, taking the mark of the beast. It's one of um, wisdom and that many will benefit from. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I bless you. Yeah, but then um, there is this thing, my people will perish because of, of lack of knowledge. And then yes. if people do not know what mark of the beast is, they will um, accept that mark even without knowing. So that's why we have to study. Study to show thyself approved unto Almighty God. Studying is one of the most important things as a believer. For you to grow, you have to study a lot. Knowledge is power and we need to have knowledge. So next question. We are winding down. We are going to the next question. What heritage is more important in the kingdom? Is it our cultural background, social or spiritual background? I, that's Daniel. Huh? Want to go first? Um, Daniel, 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 Daniel. Okay, okay. well, I will go for uh, spiritual background because no social or heritage or whatever background we are before going to end up in the kingdom anyway. So our spiritual background, I think, is, 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 is more important because that's what we're going to uh, be with in the kingdom. But then no if, thing. Um, go ahead, Deacon. Well, whatever you have to inherit with your spiritual true background, when you think you will inherit whatever you have to inherit. But most times, sometimes people want to inherit without being spiritual. Like if you take, for instance, of the, the, the ten virgins, mm. five were wise, five were foolish. But the foolish one thinks that they would go through all what they're going through, and then they will be able to inherit. But the five wise ones go towards the spiritual um, background. And then they inherit whatever they have to inherit. Because certain times people rather put, that is when you put physical things or you put things before Yahweh. Certain physical things do bong to be seen, but putting it before Yahweh then could make you even into a sort of mess. So I think that the spiritual background is the essential key towards you in whatever you want to inherit i believe that so what's about um what's about if somebody were to say um you are a patriotic citizen is that important what how would you um um see that being patriotic the nature isle of the caribbean that's how they um they see Dominica, the nature isle. So would, um, what would you say, you know, being patriotic? Well, people talk concerning the nature isle of Dominica. It's good that you, your country's nature, it's, um, it's very good. It's, it's a cultural country where you can grow anything and you will, you will be at least okay. But the thing is that what makes it nature, nature if it is corrupt? You see, what makes it nature if it is corrupt? So it only takes the, the, the clearness of goodness that makes it look pure and whatever it is which you will not find me back. you will never find it but that doesn't mean me, me me back with the nature that doesn't say it is nature it is not um nature to me when um it is corrupt i only watch a, a country as nature of thing when it is not corrupt you know but in the physical sense of saying nature well i will say that because if you had saw when maria the hurricane passed the where the country was the devastation how it was and to see it now it get back green then i understand yes it's nature but what would make it really nature and pure and clean and looks good is if it is not corrupt 
Yeah, I, so what I'm saying is, um, would you say, what, what is more important in the kingdom? Would, because a lot, there are lots of customs, a lot of, um, a lot of different activities that people are attached to, okay? Cultural activities, social activities, people would be attached to, and they would not want to let go of certain things, just such like... Um, um, World Creole Music Festival is in Dominica, and then you would say that's my culture. Would you say um, what would you say about um, culture, spiritual, and social background? Which one is more important? But you have answered. You said it's the spiritual because our social background came from Yahweh. Whatever background that the believer should have is the background from the Scripture. Whatever that um, the um, the Scripture has given us. That is exactly what we as the children of Almighty Yahweh should use as our culture and we should use as our social, use um, in our social life, okay? And um, yes, so as believers, that's what it should be. Um, so uh, I believe um, y'all are well seasoned and uh, 43 years and 40 years. So it was just two years before you, you, you had your son in the assembly. And it is a real walk, a long walk. And that is older than me, more years than my age. And um, that's a lot of years. <laughs> that's a lot of years. And I am certain that nobody said it would have been easy. Nobody told you that this walk would have been easy. And um, we would like you to share some of the um, experiences, the challenges that you'll have faced in a while. And um, yes, because we have people um, viewing and people would love to know what are the challenges that um, Deacon Matthew had to deal with, um, Brother Daniel had to deal with as a believer in the assembly. So we will start with um, Brother Daniel, the challenges that you faced as a believer what are the challenges tell uh, because people would want to come to the assembly but then regardless whatever these challenges are we have to hold on strong because whoever is on the plow and bends back is not fit for the kingdom and this kingdom inside this kingdom there are a lot of good things waiting for us so we cannot come and be seasonal. We have to, we cannot be temporary followers, but we have to be permanent followers. So no matter what, we cannot afford to let go. There are challenges for true. We will be faced with challenges, ups and downs, but we shouldn't give up. We should never give up because anytime the Almighty can just cut it upon us and we should not die in sin because it is trouble for us. So your challenges, brother um, Daniel, what challenges, what things that troubled you, things that made you cry as a believer, the things that broke your heart as a believer that maybe had you feeling like you want to give up? What are the challenges? Um, there was a few of them. I mean, first off, um, before it used to be like work, um, yeah, I used to work with different um, people and then um, when it was time for you to go to like the feast days and stuff, um, this, used, this used to be some issue um, um, on my part, like not, in, not really in Dominica, but um, like overs. Um, so sometimes these people would take this, this, that time, you know, to specifically try to um, hold you back. So. That's why my sister don't work for anybody no more. Um, but that was, that was, I won't call that really a challenge, challenge, challenge. I mean, I, that, that time I just had to do what I got to do. So it wasn't really, really a challenge. Um, the other part was with friends. So um, I still have uh, some, some of my friends. I mean, uh, most of them understood uh, the work I was in. Um, so it's not much of an influence. There was a few influences. Um, but um, I never really get it, get it to um, really hold me down to stay down permanently. Um, now, the, 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 the challenge now, um, which I think not only me, but a lot of other 
brothers and sisters going through is um, just the challenge of our own selves, you know? It's, it's not much of, of, of out there, it's more of us, ourselves, our, cha our ch biggest challenge is ourselves. Okay, so um, most times the challenges would be our own selves. Um, yeah. Deacon, Deacon Matthew, your challenges. Well, with my challenges, if I look at it, um, number one, um, seeing that I, I know what Almighty Yahweh have um, performed or what he has said in his word, you know, that we should um, do or that we should um, observe. Especially sometimes you, you find that, that you proclaim righteousness, but yet still you want to do the work of righteousness and still yet do the things of the world, okay? Because Yahweh has placed his feast days on which he has placed and which were the first day the, the seventh day Sabbath, which he has put that man should observe and keep and, and gather together to worship him in spirit and in truth. And you find sometimes challenges come here, things are coming up, especially when you have the cray all day, those things, people sometimes you find indulge yourself because um, this is not my culture. It was my culture, but no, it's not my culture. My culture is Yahweh feast days and what he have said in his word that I should go do. That's what I, be, that is my culture now. So when people say that is our culture, or oh, I not in that hour, I'm out of that hour culture. I like because I like it's not in that at all. I, because I cho chose my, my uh, a way which I should do that is right. But certain times you'll find sometimes even those you expect to strengthen you, sometimes they are the one who weakens you. So when those challenges come, I have learned and already, because if you read the word carefully, I take, for instance, who is my guide and my protector and the one who makes me wise is Yahshua the Messiah. Because when he came on, on this earth, he came to do good. He came to heal. He, and though he heal, he feed so many and what he do. But yet still, they ridicule him. So I learn from that. Because he says, see what they do, the, your master. What about you? Now, if they do him that which he heal and he do all what he did and so much good things he do, what about me? So I learn myself that whatever challenge that comes my way, it's, it's not bother to me. Because at least I know you, you must go through challenge. And going through challenge, you have to be able to overcome your challenges. And if you cannot overcome your challenges, well, it will be a tough way for salvation for you. So I believe that. So because I believe that now, no matter what comes my way, sometimes when things reach, what would be sometimes a mountains for somebody is something that is easy for me. So I don't make it a problem. So whenever my challenges come, I read the word of Yahweh, I pray, and I say, oh, bless almighty Yahweh, because I know it must come. But most times, people sometimes just feel that it should be sweet every day. No, it, shouldn't, it wouldn't be sweet every day. You have your, your tongue in your mouth, you have your teeth, and certain time when the, the, the mouth closes and the tongue moves the wrong time, the teeth beat it. Does that mean that the tongue should not be in the mouth? Or that, does that mean the, the teeth should not be there? No, that doesn't mean that. It's just that it moves the wrong time. You have a clock, it needs strength when it climbs. When it goes down, it goes down easier. So we have to learn all those things. And when you learn those things, whenever challenge come your way, then you say, bless almighty Yahweh, because we should know that those things must come. Because you're living in a what? A world of, of viper, wickedness, dry bones. That is the, the, the world you're living in today. But the thing that will beat you more is those who you expect to uplift you and strengthen you. Sometimes it's they who tries to weaken you. 
So, but once we discover those things, any challenge that comes, all you do is laugh and enjoy. Yes. So, um, it, it, when it started, it was a challenge. So, right now, it's like a lifestyle and you are used to it. Used to so, it. Yeah. But that's a good thing. But that's when you are well seasoned. But then, again, there are people that are weaker. And um, in being weaker, you have to be able to hold on strong. So um, it, it is a battle. It is a real war going on. And um, it is the, the scripture always said, the, the race is not for the swift, but those who endure to the end. So it is, not, it, 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 is, it is not easy. And it is a battle going on. So but then um, the other, our other question would be, what are your perspectives about life, Brother Daniel? And then we go to the deacon. What are your perspectives about life? My perspective about life, practically, <laughs> um, what's it like for uh, life? It's just um, trying to, I'll say, test you to see who you really are. Um, practically, because I mean, everybody go through different um, phases of life. Some have it easy, some have it hard, some have it middle easy, and some people just completely don't have it easy from the time they're born till they die. They never had it easy. But still, for every, each and every individual is how they actually live their life under all different type of condition. Because life will either break you or make you. So in the, in the same thing with the walk, um, it will either break you or make you. <laughs> You'll see some maybe join the walk and they never last. They, 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 they gone, never come back. You'll see some in the walk, they come, they go out, and then they return back again. And you see some that goes through the struggle, but yet still, they still stay there um, no matter what. So life in it, <laughs> where I see life is just to... Uh, test you to shape you to make you who you really are whether you for uh the most high whether you're not because either way at the end of the road you will know who you really are Deacon. well if we look at it and think certain times people take things very lightly it may heavy, but they take it lightly. And some things which you may take lightly, somebody may take it heavily. So they may take it very heavy and things that that is it for them, that's the end for them. But challenges must come. And when the challenge come, it is you know the to, to watch and you to know what it is about but how can you do that without the word without studying the word the bible said study yourself to show up approve a workman death not to be ashamed but rightly divide the, the word of truth so when you study the word and you keep praying you 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 see things differently you see things um that would have to be a mountain for you, you see it as nothing. That's how you see it, as nothing. So the, the understanding of that would have to be that you have to know yourself. You must know yourself. And if somebody does not know them themselves, that's a problem. You've got to know yourself and know what you are about and what are you doing. You have a choice. A choice whether to live right or not to live right. It's a choice you have. It's not something that is forced down anyone's throat that they must live or must that. No, you have a choice. It's a choice being given because Almighty Yahweh give everybody a choice. So it is up to you to say to yourself, hey, what am I going? What am I working for? Am I working? For nothing, or I'm working to achieve a goal. Then that's what you go do. It's just like you there. You decide, okay, I want my life to be better. I want, I don't want to stay there 
suffering and and there that I can even well take care of myself or feed myself. But how can that do if you just sit down? No, you got to move. It's just like faith. Faith is something you have to move. You have to move. You have to work towards it. So that's what you have to do. So life challenges to me now, which I understand. When you see it comes, as I always say, I just laugh and enjoy. That's what I do. Because things that people watch as a mountain to them, I myself look at it as nothing. And I go through a lot, a lot of challenges. Even when I was young, I remember how I work and how I suffer. Now, it has something that they call firefly. It's a little thing at night times it gives light. You would surprise to know that I was living in a village area, a gross darkness is they call River Clay, between two mountains, Mount Prosper and Girodel. And I now would walk in that darkness heading towards my home. That is about from, from the road to where I'm going, about three miles and a half, walking in the darkness. And I would have to hold that fly, firefly to give me light to go up to that track. I meet snakes, I meet certain things that whatever it is, but I make my aim that whatever it is, I will achieve whatever I have to do. You and every morning I would have to leave, you know, with about four gallons of milk every morning to go down to the city and go back to that place they call Mount Prosper. That's almost three, three miles and a half for school. And I would have to do that. And it was an enjoyment to me. And since I come to the faith to know the word of Yahweh and learn his ways, to me, challenges is just something I would just laugh and enjoy. So I wouldn't let anything block me or derate me from what I do in. I will always keep on persevering and pushing on. That's what I will always do. Brother Badley, yeah. let me tell you again um, how I see um, life in its faith. Um, I guess maybe you had that experience. Never hear a man, okay, let's say you are a runner, right? Or you play some sport. You never hear a man boast and always sing about, ah, he can beat you in that run, he can beat you in that run, he can beat you in that run. Mm. But when you finally put him to the test to run, <laughs> he he shock himself and realize he can't beat you. Yes. That is life. <laughs> Unless you don't actually go in it, you wouldn't know. Ah, I like that. So you have to be in it to feel it. You have to put your feet yes. in the shoes. You have to put your feet in the shoes to see whether it fits you, whether it squeezes you. So um, right. yeah, it's uh, okay. That's that's cool. That's nice. So what are your motivations in life? What motivated you in the faith? The motivations. What is your motivation in your faith? One, one motivation that always had me was to always see brothers and sisters happy. That was one of the funniest things with me. Always want to see brothers and sisters happy. Like if I don't, if I do not see them like happy, like it dampens my spirit quick. Dampens my spirit quick. That means um something is not um um happening or something is wrong. Just like a Messiah, remember the same Messiah said was full of grief. And he didn't full of grief, full of grief because of for grief's sake. <laughs> people was causing him to get grief, you know? And he loved he loved the people, but there was a lot of suffering, not only suffering, a lot of complaining and all kind of sorts of things. And so he grieved him. So sometimes I feel so for, for, for my people, you know. When I see them happy, everybody happy, I'm happy. You know, when I see them sad and vibes, I feel it too. So when I see if I'm among brothers and sisters and they are very happy, yeah, that that pushes me through. That pushes me through a part of 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 of, of path to, apart from my faith and believing in, in Yahweh and know that I am fighting to reach wherever I have to reach. But that part always been a drive for me. I cannot even ask you what um caused you to um join the faith because you were born in the faith. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um Dini, you dead, Sister Dini? Yes, I'm hearing. I'm busy. <laughs> yes, you have anything to say? 
No, not for now. I'm kind of tied up, getting ready to leave. Okay, great. Be safe on the road. We have Deacon Thank Matthew. You. Motivation, Deacon Matthew. What, uh, what is your motivation in the faith? Well, if I have to watch my motiv mo motivation, I would watch it. Like even from the first beginning, as I said, what I would like to see, I would like to see, you know, growth, strength, because you may do in something and try in your best to see the best come out out of that. And sometimes when you see like all your best you try, nothing is coming out of that. Sometimes those things, sometimes you find it keeps you wondering what is it. Like you try, you have, okay, let's call you a, 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 a singer, you know, and you lead in a group and you try in your best to see that they, they motivate, that they get better. And you see, in all what you try to do, this just remain stagnant, one place not moving, things not getting better. Oh boy, this there you find will have you, um, where you will think of what is happening. Am I wrong? Am I doing something wrong? But if you see when you do what you do, that things is getting better and you see in growth, that would motivate you and makes you feel that something good is happening. And you see the, the growth out of it. You see, you see the growth because in everything you'd like to see growth. And that's what Yashua the Messiah is doing. That's why he was even keep speaking. Even when he said, Peter, Peter, if you love me, Peter, he was trying to motivate Peter to see him get better, better and better, and try to make him grounded and be strong that he will be. And at, when at the end, Peter repented and Peter hold his position, he was called a pillar. Peter means that he was strong, he was motivated. But, but the motivation, sometimes there are people who are weak that needs you to motivate them, as I said earlier on. And if the, instead when you look for someone to motivate you, to to strengthen you to go stronger. Instead of doing that, they weakening you. Now, if you are weak, you're going to get weaker. But if you are strong, then you'll see that person cannot motivate you. Then what you do, you move on. So the best thing to do that we must look at, you know, and always choose who is your friend or who is your people. Sometimes people are afraid to even hear you say, even in the assembly over here you worship, you have to watch who is your people and who is not. Because some may strengthen you, some may not. Why? Because the scriptures say, some shall depart from the faith, giving it to seducing spirit, doctrines of demon. And even those that is among you, your brother or sister will turn against you and they will give you problem. You, you know? So motivation comes by you. You. Always you. Not somebody else. You have to know what you're about and then look to get strength there you can get strength and not where you can be if you walk with a fool you will be a fool if you walk with a wise you will be wise but most times sometimes you sometimes weak and you end up taking the road of a fool and then you're going down so motivation is something that if you see you have it in assembly nothing can move this assembly. They're, they're like a bundle of stick that is together strong. You may take one stick, you tell somebody broke it, the person will broke that stick. But when you see, you put all the stick together and you ask the person to break it, they will not able to break it. Because why? That, that group there, that people, whatever it is, they are one and there is strength in one. But when there is weak between, most time you find it weaken, it weaken. So it is always good. It's like uh, all fruit is between fruits. You have a dozen fruit, one is old. If you does not take out the old one between the good ones, then it's going to contaminate the rest and going to spoil it. That's how it is. So motivation, when you're looking for motivation, you're looking to find it 
from those that are wise and not those that are foolish because you will not grow for you to grow in motivation uh, to grow you have to follow those that are wise and not those that are fool okay so um if you want to be a nurse you work with nurses and not with mechanics if you work with not mechanics, with mechanics. <laughs> you'll automatically become a mechanic a mechanic yes, yes. <laughs> and then you said about the bad fruit if you have a bad if you have a, a one bad apple spoils the entire basket you cannot have the bad but then it said, let the wheat and tears grow together. It also said there will be a time for sieving. And um, everything happens for a reason. You have to have um, all kinds of people in the assembly to strengthen you and to put uh, the trials to increase, to cause you to have more faith. And then you said, stand, um, if you stand to alone, you will be broken. If you have a, um, one matchstick, you can break it. But if you have a few matchsticks together, it is difficult to break it. So the members of the assembly, the members of the household of faith must stand together that they be, remain strong. United we stand, divided we fall. Yes, you're so right, Deacon. You are right. But how long have you been a deacon? It's not too long. It's about, let me see, six years, seven years. That's a lot of years, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you expected to be a deacon 43 years as soon as you entered the faith? <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, um, it's uh, yeah, it's still good. It's still good. Um, but you mentioned something, you mentioned Peter a while ago, which is one of the main characters in the New Testament. And um, it, it, it teaches us a lesson that when you are called by the Almighty, you have to go through certain battles. Peter one was one of those that the devil literally attacked when um, he entered. Um, Peter, the Messiah, said, get thee behind me, Satan. And um, when you have the calling, you will be going through a lot of trials and the devil will be at you constantly. And we have to wear the entire armor of Almighty Yahweh that we be able to stand in these days. And then the Messiah said to Peter, when you are strong, strengthen them. Because Messiah knew that he would strengthen Peter. The comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, is there to strengthen us. But we have about two more questions. And um, we hope that um, our fellow viewers are able to um, be blessed. And we encourage them to leave, drop out their comments, their questions. And we will be able to get at back at them and we will get back at them they are welcome to um drop their comments and uh, yes it is yahweh's kingdom lifestyle ministry where we talk about the social aspect of life the spiritual and also the family and we also deal with the health health spiritual health social and um, the family, that's what we deal with. And we are encouraging, we are encouraging our fellow um, friends and fellow viewers and followers on Facebook and on YouTube. Please feel free to drop us, you know, an email and the information is on your screen right now. The email address is Yahweh Kingdom Lifestyle Ministry at gmail.com. And you could always drop us a nice WhatsApp. And it is 1469-910-7164. Our secretary will be happy to um, assist you. She will be happy to assist you. So please feel free to leave uh, an email and a wonderful um, WhatsApp share with us. And we can always give you the opportunity to share um your work so our other question would be how does your spiritual life affect your family your family life how does it affect your work life and your social life who speak me yes anyone of y'all can anyone? go first anyone can go first well your spiritual life to your family have to be an example that's what it has to be. Mm -hmm. And your social life would be how you live your life. Also, that also would have to be an example to your family. Because an example has to be 
that you supposed to be the strength to them and not the weakness towards them, to your family. So if your family some looks upon you even as the leader or the head of the home, they looks upon you for strength and not weakness. You know, so your spiritual life has to be pleasing and 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 good an example to them so that they now can pattern from you and they can grow as better people of Almighty Yahweh. So in other words, it had a positive impact on your family life. A positive uh, impact. It has to be there. It has to. Because uh, even though, if you watch when Yahshua the Messiah, though they ridicule him, but at the time so they said, truly he is the son of Yahweh. Because even when Nicodemus came to him, he said, even what they said, Nicodemus said, I, we, um, no, no man can do these things except Yahweh is with him. But even though the ridicule was there that Yahshua away from him, whatever he do, and they will look at him as the, the one that is false. But at, by his lifestyle and the things that he do, it threatened a lot of them. Even the Pharisees and them say, if we don't get rid of Mr. Mr. is going to spoil our business. He's going to spoil what we have. So his lifestyle, Yahshua the Messiah, was a, a lifestyle of an example of righteousness. So that there was a problem. So a uh, 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 head of or leader of a home must have a spiritual lifestyle to show an example. As a matter of fact, you must do what you preach. If you preach something, you must do what you preach. Practice. Because sometimes you, you practice what you preach. Sometimes you're, you, dear, you say something, you deliver, but you don't drink from it. And that is the problem. So you must drink from what you deliver in. Or you must do what is right so that they will turn on you and go. What did it say? The scripture say, turn up the child the way of Yahweh, that when they grow old, that they will not depart. But if I train in the child, and when I train in the child, I doing wrong things, and the child is seeing me doing wrong things, what the child is going to do? The child will not be an example. The child may grow out of your children, and some may say, okay, all right, all right, all right. I don't decide to take the way of my father. He's a drunkard. I will try to better myself. But how much of them I do that? Some may follow. But Yahshua said, you heard in time before, he said that, that, that father eat grapes, children teeth set on our edge. But I say unto you, it's not no more father eat grapes. Every man must stand for his own. But yet still, you have to be an example and you have to live a spiritual lifestyle if that's what you teach. So that your children, your family, your wife, could see that goodness in you and through that they can grow and be better people. Okay, Brother Daniel, how does your spiritual life affect your family life, work life, and social life? Okay, let me put it like that. Um, you, you drive right, Brother Roddy? Pardon? You drive? you drive? Of course. Okay, so you would understand what I'm going to see now. Yes. It's just like that. Let's say if you have a car, right, and you have a family in it, Mm -hmm. uh, a so-called car you say that's reliable to get them from point A to point B, mm -hmm. let's say in two hours. Unless the wise you driving, you end up taking five hours, right? Now remember, they depend on you, right? And all of a sudden, they start to watch you deface, mm -hmm. right? Because remember, a two hours end up taking five hours. Yeah. Then now, why is you driving? You're in here, bragada. The car start to break down. Uh. Then they start, to, they start to look at you a little more serious. Yes, right yeah. then afterwards the car break down now now here comes the problem then comes the problem now when it breaks down now it cannot be fixed now your family have a choice to stay with you or whether to just leave you and go and take a bus so that's how i see it <laughs> so in other that's words it. It, it's, it's like, reliable. Other you so if, if, if what you tell them you know that you're going to bring them to point a to point b and things that happen along the way 
they will start to keep watch you and at some time they would have to see whether they want to stay with you or leave you or leave you alone okay so in Just other like words that. in other in other words you are saying that it has a positive impact um yes that, yeah, that is nice work what's about your work um how does what uh, my, does have for my work um on your what I work for myself um i work for myself my only challenge is now People don't respect my Sabbath. They will still call me on my Sabbath, and sometimes I just have to ignore the, the calls. So, so I am surprised they even this they haven't disturbed me on that <laughs> interview with you because nobody will call already. Okay. The interview is so, the interview is blessed. <laughs> I get it blocked them. <laughs> the interview is blessed. So <laughs> but it's interrupt okay. It's okay. No no, they, they, they have that to is, do, but that is they, why. Sometimes you don't understand. Yeah, that is why um, there is a pause. There is the, uh, this is one of the advantages in being self-employed. You and one of the most um, one of the biggest challenges that the believer would be faced with is um, seeking employment. Um, you would want to look for a job that would um, give you the Sabbath off. But most times it is difficult to get the Sabbath off. And this is one of the biggest things, yeah. But I believe your spiritual life has been positively, um, has been impacting your family in a positive way because your wife always boasts yeah. that. Your wife has, your wife is a very spiritual lady. And, um, no, my wife is very strong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, the majority of them have to hold on to her. She's strong, very he, strong. He, he, he who gets a wife. He who gets a wife gets a good thing. Praise Yahweh. Sure. <laughs> uh, sure. hopefully, hopefully, I'll be married one day. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to send me an invitation. Don't forget to send me an invitation. <laughs> I'm married. I'm married to Yashua. I'm married to Yashua. <laughs> hey, yes. I, I, I think I will give you a, a, a gift. I will make you the suit. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I like slim fit. I like slim fit. I, I don't want too many big clothes for maybe because I, when I get my wife, I will be um, dancing, you know, away on that wedding day. And um, I want to make my wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the happiest yeah. woman on earth. <laughs> but joy makes you get bigger, not smaller. It is, is stress that makes you get small. <laughs> it, it depends. Eh? It depends. Some people is um vice versa. Yeah, it depends. Yeah. It depends. Yeah. But our last, our um, mm -hmm. our last question, our last question. There were many questions, but they have been answered in a lot of the in the conversation. A lot of the questions has been answered. So our last, our last question would be: What advice do you have for our fellow brethren or people? We have people that are viewing on Facebook and are viewing on YouTube. And we have people that are already in the assembly. What advice would you want to give to somebody who is interested in serving Almighty Yahweh and somebody who is already in the faith? So you have two sets of advice to give. Someone who is on their way to come in and someone who is there already. Okay, so the advice I, I will give to the one who is um, coming into the faith, um, First, before they even try to build a house, they better consider their costs first. Because they would not want to start building a house and cannot finish it. But it would, it would have been better that they didn't even try to build a house. So they would have to consider that work before they even start it and know to themselves if that's something they want to go for. Because once you start it, 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 it comes with a lot of sacrifices. And there will be a lot of lonely times and there will be some fire, both from the outside and within the family. So they have to read the word, understand the word and see the things they have to go through. And they have to tell us whether they want to go through that. And now if it's something they want to go through or try, then they can consider jumping that loop. And now to the others now who are already in the faith, um, I'll just advise them, they already jumped the loop. Uh, all they have to do now is just hold on. I mean, we are all not perfect. We are striving to be perfect. Yes, we will fall. But when we fall, just make sure we get back up. 
That's the main thing. Make sure you get back up. The devil don't want to try to tell you, stay down, don't worry. I um, I will never forgive you. You he he will he gonna he gonna throw in hell. Even if you try to repent and say, uh, forgive, forgive, he'll never forgive you. That's what the devil will try to do, try to keep you down so that you'll never come back to the people, you'll never come back to the walk or never stand up. But as the scripture said, a while he said a righteous man for seven times, and he'll always rise. So even if you fall, just rise because. The scriptures say, he who, 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 he who endures to the end, is that what I'm going to make it? So as long as you can last till you make it to the end, standing, that is what that comes. Okay, Deacon. Well, what I would say first to even a beginner or a beginner one who comes in first, um, you must know what you're going to get yourself into. And you have to make your decision whether you're going to serve or not. It's not something that is a, a, a joke or something that you're going to play with. Though yet sometimes you may even find your own friend who are not called, maybe called yet, they may discourage you by telling you why is that you want to do what what that is about and whatever it is but you know your mind for yourself you know what you're getting into and you have to sometimes forsake friend and go and achieve your goal what you know you want in life that's what you have to do certain times you have to forsake them, forsake friends. It may be very close friends which you find it's your bosom body, but yet still you have to make a choice and, and draw a line between you and that person. You have a choice. You have a choice to draw between you and that person. So first, you have to know what you're about or what you're going into. It's just like sometimes certain people, they say, um, I didn't really want to enter into that marriage, but why enter? So you didn't draw your line what you're going into. You, you go into a marriage, believe that is sweet dandy all the time, sweet dandy, and you don't expect to get not even a, 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 a something, a disturbance or something that might even trigger you or which you feel that is not right. You expect those things to be because you must go for challenges. Now, as I would say to brethren or believers, like precious faith, faith I'd advise that strengthening one another is the best. And how can you strengthen one another? Is it by doing things to hurt each, each other? No, it's by encouraging each other to work. Give a, a words of blessing. And if you know something or, or I know something about you, I should not go telling people things about you. What I should do is pray for you that Yahweh would change you and strengthen you, that you can strengthen someone else. But most time you find that's not what it happen. Instead of people strengthening you, they break you down. So I would say to believers and members or brethren that it is wise to strengthen each other in a spiritual way and not doing it into a, 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 a harsh way, but in a meek way that they will see and understand. Because it depends on how you manage or how you speak. Sometimes according to how you speak, whether you speak, and what you say is right, but the way you speak it can cause harm. So you have to know how you speak to one another and brethren and how you strengthen each other and how you can make one another grow. It's a matter of that same word you come back, if you come back with it, motivation, motivation, so that the person can see and that they can be stronger and stronger. We need to be stronger and stronger that we may able. Because if you build a foundation and you put weak cement in it, 
how you expect it to be strong. You got to put proper cement into it so that that foundation can be strong, that it will not able to move. And that's what you're doing. Build each other with strength of wisdom, words of wisdom, then you're going to be stronger and stronger. So I'd advise all of us, before we speak, let us think and let us say to ourselves, am I going, what I am going to do, what am I going to say? Is it right or will it strengthen or will it weaken? And if we should know what is strengthening and what is weakening, and if what we're saying will be weakened, it's better to stay quiet if we cannot strengthen. If you, certain times I say, if we cannot strengthen, it's better to stay quiet. And staying quiet is better than you say something and it will not be strengthening, it will be weakening. So I would say to believers, let us always put and bear that in mind that we need to edify each other by strengthening them spiritually. Brother Bradley, yep. or in addition, um, also to the brothers and sisters who are in and on the brothers and sisters um, who are coming in, you know how I, I, I actually see it? Um, well, personally for me, um, it's better to take your chance, right? To do what you have to do to make it into a kingdom than to assume certain things and not do it. And then when you die, <laughs> you know, you go to hell. You know that some people would say, you know what, I'd rather just go to hell because there's no kingdom thing. Them thing is, is, is fake thing. People just write stuff. Them thing they're not real, right? So they will live their life all they want, right? And after they just realize they're dead, right? Not thinking of actual reality of what will happen after. So for me, I'd rather just take my chance. Not act, actually chance in, in no faith, but I'll push myself forward in that direction, knowing that I know that there is something ahead, even if it has its own challenges, you know, than to do like others and not take that chance. Well, I personally believe in Almighty Yahweh, and I know that there is a living Elohim, and I have the faith, and their faith comes also. Their faith comes. There is a land that is fairer than they, and by faith we can see it afar. And then I can, we all have our testimonies and we all can testify how Yahweh has been good to us. And when somebody will come and say that Yahweh is not real, that person is mad to make such a statement. So my, I would encourage each of us. I say thank you very much, um, brother, my brother and my brother, my two brothers, father and son. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you all very much for such a wonderful session. It has been exciting. I have not been... Um, I'm bored at all throughout the hour, and um, I thank Yahweh for y'all. And um, this is yes, a wonderful, Yahweh. yes, indeed, it is a wonderful session. And um, we can win souls unto Yahweh. We have to fulfill the Great Commission. And I would say, everybody that um, wants to join um, the faith, you are free to join the faith. It is free of charge. You just have to commit yourself to Almighty Yahweh. Remember that the battle is on. And Yahshua said the battle is his, but victory is ours. But you cannot just access that victory if you don't give Yahweh your life. You have to be a true servant of Almighty Yahweh. And whoever is on the plow and bends back is not fit for the kingdom. And also, don't count whatever you did yesterday, the righteousness you did yesterday, but constantly be righteous because... If you die in this unrighteousness, whatever good you did in the past does not save you, but the good you do today. Let us be good to people on our way up because we will need them on our way down. Let us encourage each other. Let us stand with and for each other. In Creole, they say, Yon a lot, si pot a lot. And we thank you very much for your patience. Thank you for viewing. And we say, have a blessed day. Thank you very much. Shalom. Au revoir. Bless you.